Thanks, thanks so much, Matteo. So, you know, thanks, Matteo and, and Nick, for uh, inviting me today. So, uh, as Matteo said, I'm I'm Steve West. I'm a histology research scientist uh, working uh, within the International Brain Laboratory. And so, today, I'm just going to talk to you about the the three D histological reconstructions I've been doing of a whole CNS from brains recorded from the IBL, uh, with the principal aim of tracing the neural pixels probes within them. So that I've been working at the IBL for just over a year now, and I've reconstructed over 100 brains using uh, this method. And in order to make this really work and be scalable, we've, um, I've, I've had to develop a lot of different automation methods to make this scalable. And so I want to do is share that pipeline and some of the insights with you today. Cool. OK, so I thought I'd just first, just to make sure we're all on the same page, just talk about some of the prerequisites here for um, uh, before we begin with the histological pipeline. So obviously the first thing you'll want to have is your brain with uh, your neuropixels probes inserted somewhere and for those probe tracks to be traced in some way. Now in the IBL, we use CMDII, um, mainly because the chloromethyl group, which is attached to the DII in this, will covalently bind to the tissue along the track. So it means you get a very permanent and very high contrast labeling and without any bleeding or spread of this. So, you know, for example, if I'm having a brain ship from America and it takes a few days to get there, there's no problem of any bleed through of that. Um, the second thing that's kind of obvious is obviously you need to have your brain perfused and fixed and dissected. Uh, I just wanted to just put that on here to make the comment that, you know, I would, I would advise people to really make sure your brain is well fixed because this can really help with, um, sectioning and the reconstruction and if you want to do any histology as well this is always good to have the, the tissue properly fixed for that okay so basically you've got your brain and you know hopefully you've got your label tracks within there um the next step is to use a method to reconstruct this brain in 3d and the two methods that i've really been using are uh, the serial section two photon microscopy method shown uh, schematically here on the the left and also more recently moving towards using a a, a light sheet um, um, which uses tissue clearing and then uses a light sheet microscope to, to image this tissue. So both of these will result in a, a 3D data set where you, you know, essentially continuously scroll through the brain, as you'll see in a moment. Um, and they both have, you know, different caveats to their technique, which I'll just discuss next. So first, I'll just talk a bit about serial section two photons. So this method is the one which I've been using predominantly to reconstruct all of the IBL bra brains. Um, the slight caveat with this is that obviously it's quite specialist custom equipment. I'm not sure everybody listening will have access to one of these, but if you do, it's, it's obviously a great way to reconstruct brains. Um, so just showing on the left here that is a picture of one of our um, systems at the St. Andrew Welcome Centre, the kind of the core parts of it really. So we have our water immersion objective for imaging the brain. It, it has a vibratome attached um, to the microscope to allow serial section of the brain as, as you uh, acquire your uh, two photon images, uh, Z slices. Um, the tissue will sit here in the water bath embedded in agarose and we have our PMTs up here which you know detect our resulting fluorescence as we excite it with our two photon microscopy. Um, so the benefit of this method really is that um, I can receive brains and I can literally get them straight onto the microscope within you know an hour of receiving them. There's no big processing setup time really for it, other than embedding it into agarose. Um, and also, well, I suppose a, a, a slight negative on it is that it can be quite slow compared to, for example, the light sheet method. Uh, the great benefit of that though, is it's kind of just left, it's kind of, I don't have to spend a lot of time working with that, although it can take a while to acquire an image. Uh, it's also quite good at capturing fluorescent proteins in, in a sample. Um, this may or may not be um, relevant to your experiments, but it's, it's a second use and a good utility of the method. So just shown on the right here is a continuous scroll of an image which is acquired using this methodology. Um, so you can see here that I've acquired two channels here. So one is a, a green autofluorescent channel, which highlights all of the anatomy very clearly. And I've used quite high gain here to ensure that I get really good contrast of different brain regions. And then in the red, you'll see here um, a number of uh, CMDI labeled neuropixel probe tracks. So with this data set now, um, the next step would be registration, which I'll talk about uh, very shortly. Uh, but just to say that the, the purpose of the green channel is to, for that registration uh, procedure. And then the red channel is then transformed in the same manner to allow us to then uh, reconstruct the, um, the neuropixel probes. 
A second method you can use is using the light sheet um, microscope. Again, if you, if you have access, um, these are certainly becoming a lot more prevalent now. Um, really to make this work, you need to make sure you have really, really well cleared samples. So uh, in my experience, really, uh, the best methods that I found are solvent based ones, especially for big pieces of tissue like whole brain. Uh, but even, even with these, you know, harsh and, and good uh, lipids, uh, delipidizing sort of uh, chemicals, um, it still takes quite a while to clear a whole brain. So I usually have to wait at least a week to get the kind of images that you can see here on the, on the right. Um, so, you know, the gist of it is you're going to be clearing your brain and then you can get it onto the light sheet for imaging. Um, the great thing about imaging on the light sheet is it's quite fast. Um, but the resolution is also quite low. So you're really only looking at around cell resolution. The, the PSF, for example, on the light sheet that we have, the mesospin light sheet, is around five to eight microns. So you'd really struggle to see anything below cellular resolution. Obviously, for neural pixel probes, this is absolutely fine. Um, so just showing also on the right here is just an example of a series of Z slices through uh, an, um, a, a stack which I acquired on our light sheet microscope. Um, and as you can see, this is you know pretty well cleared sample. Um, this has just been illuminated with, with just one of the two uh, lasers uh, to form the sheet. And you can see that you can get really good contrast within the brain right to the center of, of various regions. Um, and so this can be registered in the same way as a serial section two photon microscopy data. Okay, so either using your serial section two photon microscopy technique or your light sheets, whichever you have access to, you've, you've got your 3D reconstructed brain. You should have your red CMDII channel, which is uh, where you've got your electrode tracks, and then also a green autofluorescent channel, uh, which you're going to use for registration. So that's what I'll talk about next. And so really the, the aim here in the registration is now moving from um, your original sample and aligning this with some, some form of template of uh, the mouse brain uh, with the idea of being able to essentially align it with an atlas, which allows you to then annotate your sample uh, in terms of brain regions. So the main sample, the, the main template and atlas which is used is the Allen reference atlas, and this is what we use at the IBL. Um, and so essentially this is just a really, really well annotated um, uh, averaged template brain. So the, I think in the Allen Atlas, there's over 1600 mouse brains have been imaged, which is an incredible number. Um, and they've been essentially morphed together into this average brain, which is shown in the top right here. This is just a single slice of that, obviously. Um, and so this template brain has got this average auto, auto fluorescence shown in the green here. And then on top of this, people have gone through and very carefully annotated all these brain regions. So you can essentially, by registering your sample to this template, you can you get access to all of these brain regions. And you know, in and of itself is a very rich data set, I think. So in order to actually perform the registration, I've kind of illustrated this here on the left. Um, the kind of principles of it are that you're trying to deform your sample to match your template. And you do this really, the, the best way of doing this is by performing an affine linear deformation followed by B spline uh, sort of nonlinear deformation just to, to match up any slight uh, nonlinear discrepancies between your sample and template. Um, when I'm doing this for the IBL and for the many brains I'm receiving for that, I uh, perform two registrations. So I always register the sample to our CCF template, the, the Allen CCF template. And then I also register the template over on, and on top of the sample. So what you then have are two transforms that describe the movement of points from sample into template space and from template into sample space. Um, and so you can freely move between the two, no problem, um, which you know, may, may be useful depending on in, in which space you wish to um, analyze or process your data. And on the right here is an example of um, the same brain I showed earlier, uh, which uh, was acquired with serial section two photon microscopy. And this is now being registered using this elastics pipeline. And um, you know, hopefully you can see that it's, it's pretty well aligned across the whole brain. Um, it's very hard to see, really see. You might, you might see that a few errors here or there, but generally it's, it's very well aligned. And uh, by moving now your sample into this template space, we essentially now have uh, our electro tracks shown in red, which have also been transformed with this, this registration. 
um, now are represented in the template space and therefore you know what brain regions they are lying within. Okay, so the final thing I was going to talk about on the registration side is just about registration quality. So to get good alignment, I found that in order to, to, to get the kind of high quality, really robust alignment that um, you can see here, I, I needed to use quite extensive image pre-processing. And so really the aim of the aim of this was really to eliminate noise that's present in the sample. So with any sample, especially acquired with um, serial section two photon, it tends to have quite a lot of noise within that sample. And when you're trying to register this to a very perfect template, you um, can end up kind of overfitting your sample to this template and it can start to register bits of signal which are just noise essentially. So really the, the best way to get good registration is to make sure you, you heavily smooth your sample um, and also the template in, in the same way. And it's gonna allow you to get much, much better alignment, um, which is what you can see here. And the other benefit of that then is, that even if you have things here such as damage, which is shown in one, one sample, which uh, I acquired here some, some time ago, um, even when you have damage, it can still align correctly because it can basically still see, essentially you're allowing the algorithm to just see the pure anatomical signal of your sample and align that correctly to the template. And as you can see here, whereas um, if I hadn't filled with this image properly, and indeed I, when I tested this before with this particular sample, this is what happened. Um, it, it can move the alignment up to the top of the cortex, for example, here, whereas, you know, really what is, present here is a missing part of tissue. And indeed this is reflected in uh, the registration when you perform this kind of image pre-processing. And just to say that um, that pre-processing, I'm wrapping this into a, a kind of Python wrapper, which wraps around elastics and you know, allows this pre-processing, which is well, um, well optimized for mouse brains and really allows really good alignment. And I'm wrapping it into a, 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 a Python wrapped software package called Brain Register. And, you know, hopefully this will be available uh, through the IBL soon as well. Um, I'm just testing this at the moment, um, but hopefully I'll have it ready by the end of the week. But, you know, please check the GitHub if you're interested in that. Um, and I just have a final slide here just to talk about actually now how we reconstruct the neural pixel probe tracks. So in the IBL, we, we, we're still just relying on a manual tracing of this. Um, there's a software package that was put together by Rob Campbell and other colleagues at Century Welcome Center, um, which allows a really nice visualization of these kind of 3D data sets you get from the serial section two photon microscopy. Um, and so with this software, you can you know, see in 3D and your three different views, your, your electro tracks. Uh, there are various plugins that you can use with this. And one of them is to trace electro tracks for specifically for neuropixels probes. So you can, activate that plugin and you can go along and you can click along your tracks and then you can have your points in you know, either sample space or in the template space if you use the registered brain and obviously move between the two as, as you need. Uh, just showing over here is just an example of that. So essentially we have our electro track and you know you can click various points along this. Um, the plugin will allow you to essentially connect all of these points in a continuous stream of voxels um, as, as you'd probably need for uh, actually your further analysis of, of the neural pixels track itself. So once you've traced that track, you can then- you probably wrap up now, but, but not, okay. I mean, take your time if you want to wrap yeah, up. Yeah, I've got literally this one point and then I'm done, I okay. think. So <laughs> uh, just to say that uh, once you've traced this, uh, the next step is then obviously placing your recording sites into the, into the template in Atlas. Um, and obviously the histology already constrains that really robustly. Uh, however, you will still need to align along that track to some degree. And I believe that's what Mayo, who's up next, is going to be talking about. So I won't, um, uh, I won't talk further about that. But just to give some quick acknowledgements um, at the end of this talk to say, uh, you know, big thanks to the International Brain Lab, particularly Nick and Carell, who've, who've been very supportive in the um, physiology and histology group for me. Uh, people at Century Welcome Center are Rob and Tom, who've, who've been very supportive. And obviously a big thanks to the IBL and their funders. So, thanks. Awesome. So, a feature of these webinars is that you don't see people clapping, but you can oh, see. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, uh, thank you so much. Um, and 
am I right in saying that all of the IBL data is or will be public? Yes, I believe that's right, yeah. Right, including the images you analyzed. Yeah, indeed. So and the other thing I'm doing with the images, I'm really making sure I collect like as the whole brain. So actually that's going to be a, a great resource in and of itself, just the anatomy and, and understanding how different structures may be different across samples and how that relates to the IBL. Okay. So if people want to use your tools, they could start by using them on IBL data and then uh, use them to their own data or something like that? I'm not Absolutely, sure. yeah. That would be a great way to learn, actually. I may, I may try and include some links um, in the software okay. package I illustrated. Fantastic. For that.